Thanks, Sophia. This is my first venture into presenting at a WordCamp, and I've had the flu recently, so I'm a bit croaky. So I hope you'll bear with me if I'm a bit nervous. But I thought, having been a member of the Meetup for a couple of years now, I should challenge myself and volunteer to do a talk, because I remember going to the WordCamp down at the Gold Coast, I think it was November 2012, and I was a very new to WordPress, total novice. And I found that such a valuable experience. And I found all the people in the WordPress community so helpful and friendly. So these are a few of my favorite themes. So who am I? Well, by profession, I'm actually a librarian. So I know, know a lot about information management um, and structuring things. I'm currently working for a government department as a web content editor. And that's kind of challenging to learn the ways that they think about how to present content. I hit the big 5.0 last year, so my short-term memory's gone down the tubes. So if you meet me and tell me your name, don't be surprised if I've immediately forgotten it um, and ask it for you again. And of course, I'm a WordPress fan. So how long have I been doing this? Well, I built my very first website using Joomla, which is another content management system, in 2009. And that was a project that I did for my master's degree in IT. And then I discovered WordPress. Bronson came and did a talk at the Brisbane Web Design Meetup group. And I thought, oh, this sounds like it's a lot easier to use than Joomla. And I've just built my 12th, which is only a dozen websites, not dozens, plural, um, website. And then I've had to rebuild three of those, two because the themes that I was using had been discontinued and the third one was because I found a new theme that I really liked so I rebuilt my own portfolio website. So that really makes 15 but you know who's counting. So what skills did I start with? Well I don't code and at my age and busyness of life I don't really have the time or the inclination to be quite honest to go and spend the time learning how to do it. My HTML skills um, got a little bit of a kick in the pants last year working on another government website project, but they're still fairly basic. I can't do really complicated things. And when I first started, I didn't even know what CSS was. It's like, okay, better learn about that. So for me, the WordPress platform was ideally suited to the skills that I could bring, which is around information and structure. So what is a WordPress theme? Well, WordPress theme is what determines the look and the feel of your website. So if you are a coder, you can actually build one from the ground up. But what if you're like me and you're not, and you haven't got time to learn? Well, you need to use a pre-manufactured theme. And there's basically two sources of these, the completely free ones and the commercial ones. And how do you know which ones to choose? Well, there's a brilliant blog post that I've put the link um, to up there from a company called Elegant Themes, um, which says all that I could ever think to do and say about how to choose between free themes and premium or commercial themes. So I'm not going to reinvent the wheel and cover everything that's in that post. I suggest you go and look that up. But it's... Um, a very well written blog post and is very clear. Okay, so you've got free themes and premium themes. Where do you go to find these things? Well, of course, the best source of free themes is on the WordPress site itself. Um, they're all screened by automatic, so they have certain standards that they must comply with. And if you go to that page on wordpress.org, it will give you um, not only um, a list of the free themes that are available, but it will also list a wide variety of commercial themes. And of course, you can go to Google and just type free WordPress themes and you will find a mountain of information under that. Okay, so let's have a look at some of the sources of commercial themes. There are a number of um, platforms, companies that have arisen which um, supply you know, individual WordPress themes. Themeforest is one of those. My very first 
um, portfolio website was built using one of their themes because teal is one of my favourite colours. So how could I go past that? Um, I've also had an account with Woo Themes um, and they're also the people behind WooCommerce so they have a very good reputation within the WordPress community and um, you can go and see a list of all of the themes that they have available. A lot of their newer themes are automatically responsive so you can know that it's going to work on any device that you might want to use. Um, that's a screenshot there of one of the themes of theirs that I've used. It's their most popular theme and it's highly customisable. So I'll talk a little bit more about that later. And that's actually a website that I built for um, a medieval reenactment group, which my son is a member of. He's the one holding the big flag at the front. Um, so that's using the Canvas theme. Um, another really good uh, company is uh, Studio Press, and they work off the Genesis framework. Now, I haven't had personal experience with um, these particular themes. I just haven't had the occasion to use one yet, but I have an account. And I've heard a lot of really good things from another of other people um, in the Brisbane Meetup group. So um, uh, Andy Henderson, I think, is one who uses a lot of their themes. So, yeah, can't tell you too much about them, but they have a very good reputation. And a company that I came across a little while ago is called Elegant Themes. And I've really been, um, I find their theme pricing is a little bit cheaper than some of the other companies. Um, and they've got a really good um, email newsletter that comes out with a lot of blog posts with a lot of useful information, like that article about how to choose between free themes and premium themes. And that's a screenshot there of their theme gallery and their most popular theme at the moment is called Divi. And I'm going to talk a little bit more about that one later as well. Okay, so when you install WordPress on your web host and you've found a theme that you like and you go and install it and then the first thing that happens when you look at it is why doesn't it look like the demo? <laughs> Where's all the pretty pictures and, you know, the demo looked so swish and this just looks really empty. So there's more to implementing a theme than just installing it. So what are some of the things that we need to think about? Well, some themes, and I've got a screenshot of one here, come with content that's built in that you can download. And the content that they put in their theme demonstration sites obviously is designed to make the theme look as schmick as possible. So they've really tailor-made the images that they've chosen. They've made sure that um, all of the images have the same sort of colour, look and feel, that they're all the same size, and that's another important thing. And that particular theme, which is called Nevada, um, actually comes with a one-click install XML file. So if you want to you can download that file, install it onto um, the website, and you will have one that looks exactly like the demo. Now, this can be a really good thing, particularly if you're still like me and, and in the learning process. So you get to see how they've implemented the theme, what options they've chosen, um, and you can often just edit the content that's there and replace it with uh, your own or your client's content. But while that can be a good thing, it can also be a bad thing because you end up with a whole lot of data cluttering up your um, database and you know sitting around in the dashboard that at some point you're going to have to get rid of. Um, so you'll edit maybe what's useful and then what do you do with the rest? You don't want it hanging around and taking up space. Okay. Theme documentation is something that's important to consider when you're looking at choosing a theme. Um, some of the three theme, free themes will have minimal um, documentation available. Some will go from like simple um, index.html files that you'll get as part of the installation. Um, and you can see they've got a whole lot of hyperlinks to um, different sections that will to walk you through how to um, in set up the theme, how to configure it in the way that's going to work for you. 
And then at the other end of the spectrum, and these are usually on the commercial um, theme companies, you will get full feature documentation. They'll have video tutorials built in. They'll have a whole lot of stuff that will be really useful. So the Canvas theme that I talked about before, this is their documentation page on the WooThemes website. Um, you'll see it's got a big menu down the left. Um, it goes further down, but my screen snapshot would only catch what was actually showing on the monitor. And they've got a home page overview with lots of little boxes and helpful um, directional cues there. I went and had a look at the Studio Press and Genesis website. They've got a whole bunch of tutorials on how to use the Genesis framework. And then beyond that and on top of that, they have for each individual theme, um, and I think the way that their system works is all their themes are built as child themes off the main framework. And I think Ricky Blacker is doing a talk about child themes tomorrow, so that might be worth going and having a listen to. So this is just one of the themes that I picked. It's called Altitude Pro. And you can see that it's got a bunch of you know, first steps. What do you do next? And it will walk you through. They've got video tutorials and piles of stuff like that. And this is the Elegant Themes documentation page. Um, they have uh, documentation that's specific to each of the themes. But a lot of their um, stuff is common across all of their themes as well. So they've got um, video tutorials, they've got written articles, external resources, troubleshooting tips, and it will talk you through theme installation and then using the theme settings or what they call the e-panel to set that up. And there's a whole bunch more that you can go and check out as well. Okay, what are some pitfalls for the unwary? Image sizes are one of the things um, that occurred to me very quickly because I was putting in some images um, into a website and it just was not looking the way that it looked in the live demo. And that's when I realised most themes have um, custom built containers for the images. And the way that it's going to display the best is if you make sure that your image sizes conform to the sizes of those containers that they've built into the theme. And when you do that, it all looks neat and tidy and it lines up and um, works really well. OK, what about theme option panels or theme settings? Some of them are quite basic. Some of them have so many options that it's almost hard to know where to start. And that's where looking through the documentation and working through their installation and configuration process can be really, really good. Something else to consider is the quality of the support that you might get. Um, and that can be a little bit tricky to work out. <coughs> is it going to be good? Is it going to be bad? On the um, wordpress.org website, where all of the free themes are listed, there are rating systems that you can go and check out um, to see. And it's not just um, that you know, something might have a four or five star rating. And you might think, oh, wow, you know, that's really popular. And if you hover your mouse over it, you'll find that that's you know, two people that have contributed those ratings. So just be aware that it's not just the number of stars, but the number of people who've actually reviewed it that's important. Um, you can look at how many comments there are um, on the, on the WordPress.org theme sites as well. And that can give you some idea of how good their support's going to be. You can see. Um, are there a lot of comments? How long is it taking the theme developer to get back to people? Because it will usually say when the comment um, was created. And so, you know, if, if there's a company that somebody's put in a request six months ago and they're still waiting for a response, well, maybe you need to look at some other theme. Um, and with the commercial themes, You'll often find that there's a, a community of practice as well um, on their support web pages where you know, customers who know a lot more can help out other customers who don't quite know so much. And that's part of what meetup.com is all about as well. And I happen to know that for the Divi theme, 
one of the enterprising um, customers of, from Elegant Themes created a Facebook group, which I think is an open group. You just have to send a request um, to become a member of that. Um, and it's specifically for users of one particular theme from that company. Um, I was on there the other day and one of the group members said, oh, I've gathered together and compiled all of the code snippets that people have sent in response to various queries and ask, you know, for help. Um, and I've made them into an Evernote notebook. Would anybody be interested in having, you know, linking to that as a shared notebook? Um, and so there were instantly a lot of responses and I can't remember how many entries there are on it. There's more than 100, um, but it's all searchable within Evernote. And so I think that's a fantastic resource that that, that person's gone to a great deal of trouble to put together. OK, so you've installed your theme. It doesn't quite look like the way the client wants. And, you know, where do you start learning how to make modifications to the theme as it's been installed? Well, this is where Firebug and the various other browser debug panels come into play. And I knew nothing about these several years ago when I first started. I tend to use Firefox a lot. <coughs> and Firefox, um, there's a free extension to Firefox called Firebug. And you can see at the bottom of the screen there that it is showing the um, Firebug panel. And on the left, it will show you the HTML that's been used to create the page. Um, there's also other things that you can click on, the console, um, various other bits and pieces that I'm not entirely certain what they do. The HTML one is the one that I use the most. And on the right-hand side, you can check the, the styling. So if you want to know, OK, exactly how big is that image box, you can click on it, select it, and inspect that element and it'll tell you it's so many pixels by so many pixels. Um, it will tell you um, what fonts have been used, whether, they're, whether they've got padding and all the different elements that you might find in CSS. OK, well, what if you don't have Firebug? Well, Firefox has a built-in one. You can see that it does a lot of similar things. It's got the HTML bit on the left and the styling panel on the right. Chrome has one as well. The thing I like about the Chrome one, and I've been using it a little bit more lately, is that it's a, you can set it up as a vertical one. So it doesn't take up so much screen real estate, and you can see more of the website um, as you're scrolling down. But it's still got the HTML section, and then the styling section, and then they've pulled out um, the other one where you can see the sizes of the containers, those little funny coloured squares. And I came across this amazing plugin a little while ago. Um, I've actually bought it. I don't think it was hugely expensive, but it's a plugin. <coughs> it will work with a lot of themes. It doesn't work with every theme, but if you go to the website cssHero.org, it will give you a list of the themes that it does work with. Um, and Canvas is one of them, and Divi is another one. So that works pretty well. It's quite a powerful plugin, and I haven't mastered it as yet. Um, but on their website, they have, I don't know whether it's terribly clear, their menu at the top. Um, but if you go to the link in your own time, you can have a look. They've got a documentation section, which is quite extensive. And then they've got a, a menu option called Academy. And that's where they've got a little online course that you can go through with video and everything to learn how to use the plugin. So I'm looking forward to having some time, which is something that I don't have a lot of spare time, um, to go and play with that a little bit more. OK, so the, the talk was titled, These are a few of my favourite themes. So what are my top favourites? Probably the first one and the third one are definitely on the list. And the middle one is just a theme that I used for one particular client. Um, that's a little bit visually different. So we'll have a quick look at those. OK, so this is the canvas theme. And you can see that I've used it there. And I think if we go up here, 
this one. This is the, the demo page. So they've got a magazine version that you can click on. It's a responsive theme. It's got sliders built in. It's got a whole lot of different templates that you can use. The business template looks a little bit different. So it's a fairly sparse theme, but because it's so highly customizable, you can take it and make um, websites that look very different to the live demo without too much trouble. Okay. And I have to click that every time. No, where's it gone? menu. Okay. Um, this is the uh, another theme that I've used. This one is actually from Theme Forest. It was chosen by the client. Um, the client's called Living History Australia. And so <coughs> The thing that I liked about this particular theme was the um, vertical menu in that sort of drop-down ribbon. I hadn't seen something quite like that before. Um, they don't have a large amount of content on their website, but um, the fact that they could have big full-screen historical images was something that really appealed to them. And last but not least, my current all-time favourite. Um, this is a theme that I came across from Elegant Themes and I've just found it so incredibly flexible um, and so much fun to play with. So let's go and have a little bit of a look at the preview. We'll just close that. How do I scroll down on this? Just down? Oh, this... Reverse, reverse thinking, okay. So they've got a, a top menu up here where you can put some menu items, you can have all your social media, the menu, your logo. But it's the thing that appeals to me the most is this page builder function. And I've actually created a little bit of a dummy website and I've loaded this up and I'm going to actually show you how their page builder function works because it's really flexible. So you can drag and drop things. They've got pre-built layouts that you can choose from, which is a little bit of a different way of providing pre-made content that you can download. Um, it's got fancy counters, nice image. It's automatically responsive. It's got a little bit of animation built into things. Um, you can have video backgrounds and parallax backgrounds. Who knows what a parallax background is? People familiar with that? Who doesn't know what it is? Okay, it's a really cool thing. <clears throat> it's fairly new, sort of newish feature within WordPress, but it's where the text moves and the background moves as well, but in a different time frame. So we'll, we'll see that. So there's lots of layout options available. And it's a pretty amazing theme, I find. One of the things that Elegant Themes have on their website is a customer showcase. And it's worth looking at this because you can see um, all the different websites that have been built and it tells you which themes they've been built in. And you can see the top six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, top 11 showcases are all created with the Divi theme. And you can see how different they all look. Um, it's really quite astonishing what you can do with this particular theme if you have low level skills like I do. Okay. Um, I've built a couple of different themes sorry, websites using this particular theme. Come on, where's my menu? 
I came. And there was one that popped up in the um, Facebook Divi theme users as well, which I want to show you because it was just... But it's in another language. Oops. Mm. Hopefully I've noted it down correctly. So this is somebody who's obviously got some fabulous graphic design skills as well. Okay. And you can see that parallax effect happening right there. I don't know what language it's written in, some, some European language. And I don't know how they've managed to get that diagonal bit either, but a yeah, quite a bit of custom work that's been done. But it's just um, a great example of showing the flexibility of this particular theme. And you can go and have a look through his website. Um, I can put a link in the presentation at, later on. Okay. So how does this theme actually work? I built a little test site. Welcome to WordCamp Brisbane. I didn't choose to do a parallax effect on that. And this was all done using their pre-built layouts. Um, so that's one page. That's another one. And here's an example of a contact page as well. So how do you make this happen? Well, let's go and have a look at a page. Here's our home page. And you can choose to use the normal default editor with this theme, um, or you can use the page builder. This page has been put together using the page builder. And you can see the blue things here are sections. So we've got a, a normal section, then they've got the purple one tells me that that one's a full width section. I've got rows of information and I can build whatever layout I like using this page builder without having to know lots of complicated um, HTML code or even PHP because I don't know anything about PHP. Um, and even you don't need to have a lot of CSS. I haven't changed any of the CSS in this particular theme. Okay, so why don't we build a new page? And we're going to use the page builder. And it's automatically put in a section with a row with an empty cot, you know, um, module box. But let's say I want to build something like a portfolio grid. I don't, think, I don't think I've got any blog posts in here at the moment, so I'm not sure what will happen if I use that one. But I'm going to create a team page. So I'm going to load this pre-built layout. I've got my full width header. Well, let's publish that first. And then we can actually go and see. Oh, let's add it to a menu. <laughs> that, that might help. Or you can just view page. Oh, okay, yeah, that's probably quicker. Uh, yeah, but how do I make it open in a new window with this trackpad? Hey? Okay. Thank you. I'm not really a trackpad person, I'm more of a mouse person. So, so here is our pre-built team page. We've got a header, 
we've got some image spots, we've got some people, some stuff about their skills, another bit about what we've done, some recent blog posts, recent projects, and a call to action at the bottom. Okay, so how do I switch back to the previous one? Is there a quick... Previous page? Previous tab. That one. Yeah. Is there a short way of doing that? No. No. Okay. Two yep. Yeah. Okay. So we want to change what's in the full width header. So we're going to click on this little menu bar and we're going to say that it's just our team. Okay. You can see subtitles. We can choose whether it's a light or dark text colour depending on what background we've used. We can put a descriptive um, admin label so that when we're looking at our page with all the little different modules we know exactly which module is for which thing. We can even apply different CSS if we want. So we just save that and let's say I wanted to change that background. At the moment it's, it's got this particular background colour so let's put an image there instead and we'll choose that one Make it the background. Um, we don't need to have a colour there anymore. And you can see all the different options. I can put in a background video, a background um, shadows. I can choose whether I want a parallax effect. Because this is a short area, I probably won't bother. And here's a whole row. It's got image block, a little text block. Let's add a row and see what our options are. So without having to know a lot of code, we can already choose, oh, I'm going to need four things that all line up together on this row, or I want half the screen to do this, and then I want two smaller blocks. Um, so the possibilities are really almost limitless. Let's delete that row. And let's have a look at what a specialty section is. And this is different layouts that aren't just all on one row, but are a bigger block. And I think they're building even more of these options in the next version that comes out. Um, yeah, there's a whole lot of stuff. We might decide, look, we don't want that section. We're just going to use these. We'll just update that. And now we can't. Yeah, so we're have to right. Up. Yeah, yeah we've run out of time. Sorry, and I know that you might have some questions. Um, it's yeah. gone completely. So, I hope that was helpful. Thanks, Thank everyone. And I, hopefully, I will actually know the answer. Um, yep. How does the theme work with SEO by Yoast? Um, as far as I know, it works fine. Um, yeah, one of my clients is here. Yeah, Mike, Michael's using the Yoast plugin with a Divi built theme. So. It seems to be working fine. Cool. Any other questions? Yeah? I'll show you. But um, if a theme is discontinued, does that mean it's permanently discontinued and that you have to rebuild the website? I don't um, no, you can. Well, I, I said I rebuilt two websites because the themes had been discontinued. They were older themes from the Woo Themes range. Um, you can continue using a theme that you've bought because um, you've got a license to use it for as long as you like. What happens if they discontinue it means that is that they're not going to be continuing to upgrade it. And you might find that you start to have problems because WordPress is continually being improved. 
and there are releases that come out regularly for WordPress. So what I found with those two particular sites was that error messages were showing up in the dashboard. Now they weren't affecting the functioning of the site yet, but potentially there could have been a problem in the future. And so I just spoke to both of those clients and said, look, I think we should rebuild it. Um, and I'd, we, I actually rebuilt both of those sites using Divi. And they're quite different. So. Yes, up the back there. Um, this may be a silly question. There are no silly questions. I'm not actually sure. Um, sometimes um, you can a export sometimes from platforms um, and, and get an XML file or something that you might be able to use to import. But oftentimes if you're rebuilding it in a completely different platform, the way that the platform works is quite different. And so sometimes you're better off just cutting and pasting the content from your current site into you know, the, the page construction process of the new site. Okay, thank um, you. WordPress simply does have a Squarespace importer. Yeah, there you go. Your content, like that, that's it. Um, yeah. We have time for one more question and then we've got, uh, got a break. Yeah. We've got one right here. <laughs> um, you spoke about Firebug yep. and the Firefox, mm -hmm. but I didn't catch the name of the one for um, I don't know that it has a name. To if you just right click anywhere on the screen and choose Element Inspector from a little menu that pops up, and that and that will be whatever the built-in um, debugger is for that browser. They all have them. Even IE has one. Um, yeah. Yeah. We're going to have to wrap it up there, unfortunately. But please uh, feel free to. Uh, and ask any questions you've got. I'm sure yeah. Um, right now we've got morning tea. Morning tea. Yeah. Coffee. Yeah, so uh, hope you all join us. Thanks. Thank you. And I hope you got some benefit out of that. <laughs>